Hi there you guys! Today I'm gonna be showing you how to make these beautiful parrot earrings and I'm also providing a free pattern and I'm showing it in easy way so a beginner could make it. So stay with me until the end of this video. Also subscribe with the bell, like, share and comment for more videos like this one. Check description for a full list of materials and a Facebook page where you could share your beautiful designs that you did following my tutorials. And you could also support me in PayPal or by becoming a member because a lot of work goes here in these videos. Link to the membership in description and at the join button. Now let's start with the list of the materials. Okay guys, so what I'm using here for this video are seven colors of 11 ounce seed beads, a purple, red, orange, yellow, white, green and brown. And I'm also using here earring findings in silver color. This is nylon nylon thread that is 0.3 millimeters or size D. This is size 10 beading needle and these are scissors. And now I'm going to take about an arm span of thread on my needle and I'll be back. Okay guys and now for this work I'm gonna provide you with a pattern. Now you see it on your screens and I will post it on my Facebook page if you want to download it. So you might go there and do this if you want. I will post it one day after the video is on. Okay and in my first step I'm starting my work by making a row of eight red beads. Okay and I started by picking up those two red beads. I'm leaving here a small tail, let's say 10 inches or 25 centimeters to finish my work with it later. And as I have those two beads, I'm exiting through one of them and I'm going through the other one. And I pull. Now I have this. Now uh, the holes of my beads are pointing in this direction and they are next to each other side by side. Then I'm going in the second one. Take another red one and go backwards through this. Like that. And then through the newly added bead. And I need to have eight beads in a row. So I will repeat this until I have eight beads. Okay, and this is my 8 bead that I'm adding here. Now, I'm not satisfied how these beads sit next to each other. That is why I'm going back through all of them. Okay, now I have this first row ready. Okay guys, and from here on I'm going to continue with the so-called brick stitch. And I'm starting it always with two beads. One is red and one is purple. And you see these thread bridges that I have here between my beads. I want to go through the second one of them. So this is the first one between the first and the second bead. And this is the second one between the second and the third bead. 
okay and i'm going under this thread bridge with these two beads on my thread and i pull and after i pull guys what i need to do is to go through the bead that is closer to the center of my work which is the purple one in this case and then what i need to do is to reinforce because as they go through the second thread bridge they stretch and they need to be reinforced so i'm going through the neighbor bead and then backwards through the purple i go through the second thread bridge when i decrease and the beads in my next row will be less than in my previous row okay now i take one purple bead and i go under the next thread bridge that i have here on my way from now on until the end of this row i'm gonna be adding them one by one after that i need a green one and i'm going under the next thread bridge between the next two beads that I have here. Pulling. And going backwards again through the green one. Then I take an orange and go under the following thread bridge. And backwards through it. and then i take a yellow and go under the next thread bridge just like this and for the last thread bridge i need a red one and you could follow the pattern or work with me now i need a red and a yellow again i go under the second thread bridge that i have here and backwards through the yellow which is closer to the center and don't forget to reinforce your work now it will look much 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 better if you reinforce by going one more time through those two first beads and i do this only when i make decreasing brick stitch now add orange green purple red Then I need a red and a green one for my next row and I'm going under the second thread bridge here. and then add orange yellow and red
red and yellow, second thread bridge, orange and red. Then I need two red beads, again second thread bridge. Reinforcement. A red one at the last thread bridge. But then here I need to add two brown beads. And how I'm adding them, I'm taking one brown and I'm going under the same thread bridge that I have here that I already been through with the red one and then I go back through the brown again. Another brown one and I go back backwards like this through the brown. Okay. Now what I want to do is to turn directions and how I do this, I go back through this red one in this direction then I go through the yellow one and again through the same red in this way I'm turning direction okay then through this brown and through the last one but now my thread is in this direction to be in a position to start the next row and I will continue with two brown beads but now uh, this brown bead should go out of this one. That is why I'm not going through the second thread bridge, but through the first one here, between the two brown beads, as you may see. I'm pulling. They just go out a little bit now from my work. And then I go through the second one that is closer to the center. And now guys, I don't need to reinforce because they don't stretch like when I go through the second thread bridge and they sit nice and tight. Then I need a red one and I'm going here under the second thread bridge. After that, I need two whites and a red. I'm adding them one by one. First one white, next thread bridge. Then one more white. And this is the last thread bridge that I have here. And according to my pattern, I need one more red here at the last step. And how I'm going to add it? Under the same thread bridge where I added the white one. I will use it one thread bridge twice to add another bead here. Okay. And I'm going like this through it. And then I need a red and a white bead and I'm going under the first thread bridge. How I know I'm going there? Because in this row 
these beads are sticking out in this direction, it means that I should go through the first thread bridge to make them stick out. Because if I go through the second, they will go to the inner side and won't stick out. Now I'm putting here the center of my eye, of the parrot's eye, I mean. The pupil, okay? And then again, a white. And two brown beads are coming after that. This one. And the next one. And now my the beak of my parrot is ready. And now my friends, I want to reposition my thread again to exit out of this bit in this direction. And if you remember how I do this, it's I'm going like this through this one and diagonally through the neighbor one. And then again through the neighbor and diagonally through this one. In this way, I'm turning directions without any thread showing. And then I need a red and a white. And now because I'm going to the inner side, compared to this bit I'm exiting out of, I know that I need to go through the second thread bridge. You could consult with your pattern for this one. And then I go here through this thread and through the white one. I need a white. I go here backwards through this white and a red. And go like this. And after that, I need a row with three red beads. I'm taking two of them. I'm going under the second thread bridge that I have here on my way. And I make the familiar step of going through the one that is closer to the center and reinforcing. Once you get the brick stitch, it's really easy. There are several several rules you should follow and everything will be okay. Then I will make another row with three beads. I'm taking two going again under the second thread bridge repeating the same thing again adding one red under the same thread bridge that I have here. Okay. And I need two red beads. I'm going again under the second thread bridge that I have here. The second of the two thread bridges that I have left here. Okay, and now it's time to take my earring finding and as I'm exiting through one of those red beads, I'm going in the other one 
and pulling. Then what I want to do is to go one more time through those beads and reinforce it. Okay, like this. And like this. And you could do this several times, as many times as you can. And now I want to turn my work in this direction. And I want to reposition my thread by going through all of those bits and I want to exit here out of this thread. I go through all of them. Then what I need to do is to go through all of those red beads like this. Okay, and I will move my needle here at this end to finish it properly. Okay, my friends, and now I put needle on this shorter end of my work. And I'm going here through some beads in this direction. I'm making here a loop. And I go once and I go second time through this loop I've made and I pull. After that I go through some beads in this direction and I cut this tail thread okay and now guys i'm in a position to start my fringes and i'm picking up guys the following sequence two red one brown three yellow two dark orange three green beads three purple and four brown beads okay this is what i take for the first fringe and I'm sliding it down. Then what I need to do guys is to skip these three uh, brown beads and go through the fourth one just like this. And when I pull I have this beautiful shape here at the end and I need to go through all of my, my beads in this direction. And how I do this, I just go with my needle through all of my beads. I'm even going through two red beads that are from the brick stitch that I showed you before. Okay, why two of them? Because when you go through two, there is a less probability to have holes here between the fringe and the main brick stitch part okay then uh, it, it is easier for me to flip my work in this direction like this and then go through the neighbor two beads I always flip my work the way it's easier for me Now I'm going to take absolutely the same sequence but I will start with 3 red this time and after that 3 red everything is the same from here on. So I'm increasing this first part with one bead. And what I have here on my needle are 3 red beads, 1 brown bead, 3 yellow beads, 2 orange beads, 3 green beads, 3 purple beads and 4 brown beads. 
okay and you will see it written here and the only difference is that i'm adding with the previous fringe is that i'm adding one more red bead in the beginning okay then again i'm going through the fourth brown bead and then through all of those beads in this direction maybe it will be easier for you to go like this in one movement through all of them and you should fix this shape here at the end to look better and pull now you see how it looks then I will go through one more bit in this direction because as I said I find less probability of of having holes here between the fringes and the brick stitch in this way but the other thing is that you should pre-stretch your thread before you do this this is another way you could prevent this loosening up of your work then I go again like this and I'm in a position to start my next fringe okay and I think you could guess what's coming up next it's four red beads plus the familiar sequence okay I'll pick it up and I'll be back okay and I have four red beads plus one brown three yellow two orange three green three purple and four brown beads okay it is the same sequence plus one red more in the beginning okay and now guys from now on i will write the formula that you're going to use here at the top okay five plus the familiar sequence six plus the familiar sequence seven plus the familiar sequence eight plus the familiar sequence and nine plus the familiar sequence of brown three yellows two orange three greens three purple and four brown beads okay okay do this i'll do this off camera and i'll be back and here i am at my last step guys where i reached nine red beads plus the familiar sequence if you want a more impressive and long tail increase the number of the beads let's in each fringe let's say with three beads instead of one and you will have a longer and more impressive tail if you want now I'm showing it in this way and now what I need to do is to make a loop here go twice through that loop I've made and in this way I'm doing a very secure knot I'm pulling then I will go through some beads in this direction if you want you could zigzag through your work a little bit and after that cut your tail thread okay guys and now my beaded parrot's earrings are ready if you want to see more and more videos like this subscribe with the bell also like share and comment to give me signals to continue with my videos check description for facebook page where you could share your beautiful designs that you did following my tutorials and a lot of work goes in these videos so you might also want to support me in paypal or by becoming a member and more about the membership in description and at the join button thank you so much for watching bye bye from me